Hey guys, it's Don here from Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be checking out the latest version of Raspberry Pi Imager. So let's get started. So it's been about a year since they last updated this program from version 1.5 and now to 1.6. And one of the things that was missing, or one of the key features that was missing when I mentioned it the first time when I reviewed it, was that it was missing advanced settings. I feel like they should have put more options. It looks very similar to Etcher. What I mean by putting in a few more options is, you know how we have to configure the config file and sometimes we already know the specific options. They should have made at least a menu that we could just configure that. Something that you could actually use to configure the config txt file or maybe enable SSH or overclock the Raspberry Pi directly from this Raspberry Pi imager without having to go in and manually configure it yourself. And that is something that they just recently added to the Raspberry Pi imager, which is advanced settings. Now it does have a couple of settings that I didn't even think to add in there, but it's also still missing some of the settings that I would like to have in there as well. So let's check it out. Now here I am on my desktop and I'm just reading about the 1.6 version. And then on this, I am still using the Raspberry Pi Imager 1.5. So you see that 1.5, as soon as you open it up, it says there is a new Imager available. Would you like to download it from the website? Now, if I hit yes, I think it would take me down to the software page, but because I'm on Linux, I don't think I need to do that because I could just do sudo app install Imager, or Pi Imager. But since I am on a Ubuntu desktop, let's see if that works. Um, you're on the latest version, sudo apt update. Let's see if I do that again. Will it give me 1.6? No, it will not. It's probably only for the Raspberry Pi OS. So I'm going to download this Ubuntu version, save it, head over to downloads, and you should see a dev file there, which is what they called it, imager 1.6 dev, sudo apt install imager. And it should upgrade the version that I have. Maybe I should close this out just in case. And let's reopen it now. There we have it, version 1.6. Now it looks almost the same as the previous version. Nothing has changed on default settings. So I can still choose my OS, choose op other operating systems, erase the EEPROM, uh, go to others. Let's see, Ubuntu Manjaro is on here now. I don't remember seeing this last time. Uh, emulation, retro pie, nice. So miscellaneous utilities, the bootloader factory settings. Okay, to get into the advanced settings, what they tell me is that you have to use shift control X. And oh, there we have it, advanced options. Now, I did take a look at some of the screenshots that they have over here. Let me close this out. Can I make this a little bit bigger? No, I can't enlarge this, but let's get back into the options and we can scroll down to see what they have. So first, for this session only, you can always change to you always use, or for this session, disable overscan. So I've got the black bars on the corners. You could disable overscan before you even install the OS, which is a good option because I have monitors that need it, some don't. Especially when I'm using HDMI recording, it does require me to disable the overscan. So this is a nice option to include as soon as you boot up. You could set the host name, which is something I didn't come up with on that first review I was thinking about. I didn't even think you could do this on here, but well, technically modifying the host file would actually change the local. So uh, that's pretty cool that you could change a uh, host name, which helps my router find this Raspberry Pi as soon as I name it, which is good. Enable SSH is one of the key factors, but they also included the fact that you could change the password for the user and also set an authorization key. So uh, double SA, if you could say. Uh, you could also configure Wi-Fi through this advanced uh, option and also the country uh, Wi-Fi signal. So if you're in Japan, you get more signals, US, stuff like that. You can set, also set the locals instead of being uh, UK, it's in America for me in that case. And you can also play sound when you're finished, eject media when finished, and also enable this. What I read up about this is that it sends a ping to their uh, Raspberry Pi server to let you know what operating system you actually installed and it kind of gives them like a little bit of a stat. It doesn't send much personal, it doesn't send any personal information, but it does send something like that, which if you don't want to include, you could just uncheck it and it won't send anything out. But yes, um, that's basically about it. Now, a couple of things I did wish that they had was ability to modify the command line.txt file, which sometimes I would have to go in, especially if you're using an older mouse, I would have to enable mouse pull, I mean, disable mouse pull. 
and the ability to lock down an IP address because you could already do that and you could set an IP address through the command line.txt and having that ability in this advanced option would be nice too so I don't have to go out and still search for what my DHCP server gave the IP to my Raspberry Pi if I could set it through here. So those were the two options that I would wish they actually included as well as possibly overclocking. So I don't have to eject the SD card, plug it back in just to go back in the config file to overclock it because I'm pretty sure you could just do it through here if they added the ability to. And that's basically about it as far as uh, some other details that are missing. The biggest thing that I do like is that you could configure the Wi-Fi right out of the box. I don't have to hook up a Raspberry Pi Zero that doesn't have an Ethernet and try to configure the Wi-Fi. Especially the one that I'm using for this, which is my uh, teleprompter, which this Raspberry Pi, the ports are all broken. So being able to set the Wi-Fi right out of the bat without having to go in and plug it into another Raspberry Pi to do it, that's just my problem. But I like the ability to have uh, to configure the Wi-Fi, which is really, really nice. And I think that is about it. Did they do any other changes going down this? Uh, mission is to design. So going down the comments, I did find something that was really funny, which is this. Why not just make it, why do you make it so hard? <laughs> just a little advanced button, which is so true. Like, why do you have to make it a key combination? Just hit a little like cog wheel or advanced option. That would be nice. But other than that, looking through um, their updates and stuff like that, it seems like those are the only things that they really updated. I don't know if the internals, they may be changed the encryption method or anything. I don't know if they changed anything internally, but according to that is that they added the advanced options and now you have the ability to do all that that I just mentioned. Again, I wish there was a few more options that would work a little bit better, but um, that's basically about it. Anyway, if you guys wanted to check it out, uh, please download it from, I'll leave a link down in the description where you could get the latest version. And that's it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this, leave it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.